Hi, Stefan here from Infensia Soundtrack again. Um, so I'm gonna do a little demo of uh, how to use the thruster prefabs um, in the thrusters pack available at the Unity Asset Store. So uh, basically once you've imported the package you'll uh, just have the, the demo, um, demo folder and the thrusters folder. And we won't really be touching the demo folder now, um, so in fact you can actually even uh, delete it at this stage. So we just have the thrusters. And uh, the first thing I'd like to do is just to create uh, a couple of objects. So um, I'll go into, uh, let's create just um, a simple cube. Move it into the world. Start by zero, zeroing the position. And uh, we'll make a duplicate control D of that one. Just make a floor out of it. We'll make it larger. So 20 by 20. Um, the thrusters as well, they're uh, by default, they're applying a, a fair amount of force. So if you create a box that just weighs one kilogram or something small, which is the default weight, if you add a rigid body, uh, it'll just take off like, like you've never seen it before. So what we'll do is we'll make this, uh, that we're gonna apply the thruster to, we're gonna make that slightly bigger. So let's make it just uh, uh, maybe three meters. Uh, by three meters and three meters tall and uh, then what we have to do is uh, go to component physics and add the rigid body uh, component to it and um, just leave most of this default uh, we want it to be affected by gravity but increase the mass let's say it's uh, 500 kilograms and uh, quite light uh, light object uh, maybe if you have a spaceship or so it could be thousands and thousands of kilograms but let's start start like this anyway um, and uh, let's also name this particular object uh, let's name this one floor and let's name this one just uh, maybe it is a uh, ship there we go um, so now what we want to do is uh, we want to add um, a thruster to this uh, to this object so you expand the thrusters um, and the prefabs and there's a bunch of uh, created uh, or presets which is a bunch of prefabs here and uh, you can sort of get the sense of the coloration of them um, by looking you know in the particle animator uh, a thruster prefab consists of uh, let's have a look here and uh, you'll have the uh, the particle emitter, animator, and a world particle collider, so the particles will bounce off the, the floor. Um, the particle renderer and uh, audio source, which is uh, a looped sound effect for the particular um, thruster. They're all, they all have different sounds. And finally also a script uh, that controls um, you know, how the thruster functions and applies the force to the parent object. And the uh, thruster force um, varies on these different thrusters but again you're definitely gonna have to go in and change this so the thruster force um, is just set to a value and you'll have to figure out how much force you need to apply to your objects uh, depending on their weight and how much you want uh, them to uh, to be affected by a thruster but what we'll do is <clears throat> I'm gonna take this uh, this prefab and just drag it onto my ship and um, as you can see it's uh, added that as a child and um, um, by default, the, it'll add it to the center of your object, and uh, you'd probably want to move it down slightly, so it's uh, maybe towards the bottom of your object, or you want to position to it where uh, where your jet engine is, or whatever it is that should have the thruster flame. Um, so, once I've added uh, this one, I can uh, let's for simplicity, let's just rename this one uh, thruster. And uh, by default, now uh, if I press play. Uh, not a lot would happen. In fact, first of all, we need to, uh, we should really uh, uh, add a light source so we see something. Uh, let's create a directional light and rotate that into place a little bit. That'll do. And let's see what happens. So we just drop down there. Let's also uh, move the camera a little bit. Uh, 
let's use the view that we've actually got here. So I'll go to uh, align with view here. There we go. And nothing will happen now. We won't really apply the, the thruster because there's nothing to say that the thruster should start or stop. And uh, within the thruster script, there is, uh, uh, there is a function called start thruster and another one called stop thruster, which will actually start or stop the thruster. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create a, uh, a script that we're going to apply to this ship. So let's create a JavaScript in this case. You might want to be using C sharp instead if that's what you do. And let's name it script ship. And we'll edit this script. Here we go. So what we want to do is we want to um, find the uh, uh, the thruster object and um, um, and make it start and stop when you, for example, click the fire button. So the script, um, the thruster script will contain the function that we need to call. So the first thing we do is um, we we need to access that script. We use the game object um, to locate it for now. If you have more thrusters, you want to use uh, something else instead of uh, the way I'm locating it now. You want to be sure that it's just accessing it for this particular object. And let's just start the thruster. Then we want to drag this um, script to the ship to apply it. You'll find that it's uh, up here down here. Let's press play. Um, start thruster is not a member. Uh, let's have a look. So instead of doing this, we obviously need to get the object thruster and then do get component because we want the the component, the script component of the uh, game object thruster. There we go. Kept it. Okay, and that sort of worked, but. Uh, what it did is uh, it kept restarting the thruster over and over again because uh, we didn't actually create a check to say that you know once it started it shouldn't really be restarted all the time. So we'll actually there's a there's a variable called is active for the thruster. So let's uh, verify that one first. So we want to do it the same way. So we want to use the same script component and instead of calling the function to start to the thruster we want to see if it's active so if it is active then start the thruster okay and that didn't work yet let's find out why oh yeah Sorry, we obviously want to do it if the game, um, if the thruster is not active, then you want to start the thruster. So, here we go. And that worked. Finally, we need to also make sure that it shuts off the thruster once you release the fire button. Um, so, if the fire button is not pressed, we'll drop this in here. And in the same way that we checked if the thruster was actually running or not, this time we want to see if the thruster is running. So if it is active, then we need to call stop thruster instead. And then we play it. There we go. So when I click the fire button, it'll fire the thruster. And I haven't, uh, there's no, the reason why it goes side, sideways now a little bit is because uh, just the, the, the nature of the physics, I haven't controlled, uh, we've no, not created anything to steer this, uh, this object, so it'll just thrust it up and maybe wobble to, side, to the sides a little bit. Um, if you want to 
it customized the thruster. You can either customize it straight in the prefab. We've used uh, the thruster one at this. Um, so if we want to reduce the amount of force that's applied, you could put uh, a smaller number for the thruster force. And it'll reduce that number and we'll reduce it even more. 5,000. And let's drop it down all the way to 2,000. That's just barely makes it take off. So uh, you can also uh, I've changed the actual prefab thruster force now. You can also customize it. Uh, you'll see that it'll go bold now. So 3,000. Um, so if you use the same thruster over and over again in your project for different purposes, uh, you can change the force. Uh, this is uh, the nature of Unity how it works. So if you change it here, it doesn't matter what you change the prefab to. It won't really carry on into this one again. There we go. And also the way this works now is um, um, the, w the way we created the code is uh, it's just looking for a game object called thruster and calls the script in there. So if I delete that, um, that child and I drag another thruster onto this, by default uh, it won't work because it's the, the little ship script is looking for just some game object called thruster. So let's rename this one. And uh, this one, by default, has uh, some more force to it, and uh, we'll play that. And what you'll notice now as well, you said, first of all, let's reduce the, the amount of force that's applied. And you'll see now that, um, first of all, the, the maybe the, the particle size, first so you'll see that it's uh, we didn't actually move this one down when we created it, so it put it in the center of the object. So I'll move that one down to, towards the bottom, and that should give us a similar result. Let's move it down further. And what you want to do as well, let's say your object is a lot smaller. Let's say it's just one meter. You'll notice now that when we fire the thruster, it's still just as big as it was before and uh, you'll what you'll have to do is either in the prefab or in for the particular object most likely uh, you'll have to go in and change some of the attributes and um, originally I created a scale um, a scale variable but it doesn't apply everywhere by the it's how unity works you can't really apply it to the um, to the size of the thruster itself it can do it to some of the features but rather than uh, applying some some of it with a scale uh, scale variable and some man you know manually having to edit it. Um, I've decided to to just uh, explain to you that you can change the ones that you want to be looking at is the min and max size uh, of the emitting particles. So let's lower this one to 0 0.3 and that one to two. Uh, by doing that, you'll see that the particles are are smaller. So you'll have to play with those values to get it to the point that you want to have it. And also you might want it not to shoot down so fast. Um, so if you go to local velocity, you can reduce this number as well for or increase it if that's what you need to do. You see that the flame is a lot smaller there now. And you probably also might want to change uh, the size of the, uh, the emitter. Um, this is a square of 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 meters so that one's all right whereas some of the thrusters will have a much larger maybe a one one by one meter or something like that so just uh, customize this size uh, to whatever your need is the the y-axis is uh, 0 0.01 because basically it'll just uh, uh, start at the at the nozzle of your thruster or engine rocket you can see that one made it slightly wider by going up to 0 0.5 or you could go down to 0 0.1 for example that'll have a really like a point point of where this the particles are starting to emit from uh, in the original package that you imported have a look in the demo scene that was included there to see how you could control maybe how the thrusters are applied and uh, how to add some movement to the sides and uh, just have it um, have a play with it and see what you can uh, get out of it. And I hope uh, it uh, it serves a, a purpose for your game. Thanks a lot. Bye.